how to avoid divorce and save your marriage. If you're looking for this, you've already put yourself on a good path, but you may be asking the wrong question. Not every marriage is meant to last. If you're struggling with your marriage, take the time to look into the real reasons you don't feel satisfied. Sometimes we hold on to things that no longer serve us to avoid feeling like a failure or facing the shame of letting others down. These aren't good reasons to stay married. I'm going to introduce you to a quiz from John Gottman to determine whether or not it's time to leave your marriage. I'll put it in the link or the comments below so you can check it out. Sometimes it's not worth salvaging and it's time to leave. If this is your case, there are several things that he recommends that you do to get help. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Things that you need to do in order to determine whether or not you should save your marriage or end up in divorce, which is the real question I think we should be asking. Do I put in the time or do I cut bait and run? Is take responsibility for your own happiness. Do not depend on the person that you're with to make you happy. The second thing is to stop the blame game. The reason I say this is not just because you're directing blame at your spouse. You may be blaming your situation. Well, culturally, I can't do this because this is how I grew up. This is my expectation. Or my religion won't allow this to happen. Or da, 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 da. We blame all kinds. We have kids. I couldn't do this to the kids. There are all kinds of reasons we create around ourselves to stop taking responsibility for our own happiness. What I would recommend, which I had done if I had known about it, is taking this John Gottman quiz. And what he does in the quiz is he asks you a series of questions that, given the answers, give you a certain score. If you're below a certain number, if you're below 45 on his scale, you are in a place where it may be better for you to just end it and move on because the communication and the alignment is so completely at opposites, it's an almost impossibility statistically to overcome. If you're above that, you've got some things to work on that you can do and maybe have success, so you might want to consider that. I didn't have this test to take, I didn't know about it, and I wish I had, because in my marriage, I had married a really good person. I had married somebody that had great values, was very intelligent, was wise, a good mother, and yet we were not aligned. And we put in a lot of work in therapy, spent a lot of money trying to come to an alignment. And after two years of working through this and the roller coaster ride that it is, while there was some great value in that, there came a point where I realized I was only ever going to be tolerated. I could not get to a place where I was accepted as I was. I was tolerated. And it is not enough for us to be tolerated by our most intimate relationship. That is not enough for anyone, in my opinion. And you may think that that's still good enough to hold on for all of the reasons that keep you there. For me, I expected more. And so I took responsibility for my happiness. I could not continue in this place being tolerated and be happy. And I didn't blame the situation, my religion, my culture, my upbringing, the kids. I just decided I must change this. And the process of doing that allowed me not to save my marriage. It ended it. I didn't avoid divorce. I confronted divorce. It was hard. But I'll tell you something, 50%, about almost 50% of people end up in this space, and it's hard for all of them. However, in my case, and I think in others, it was the right choice. I know that I'm happier away in a place that I'm no longer feeling like I'm tolerated and around people that sustain and support me than I was with somebody who could not support me and align with me. And I know that she will probably feel happier and more at ease in that space as well. This is something to consider. Really, when we talk about avoiding divorce and saving our marriage, 
the underlying core thing that we're looking for is happiness and alignment. Sometimes the person you're with, you made a mistake in choosing or you grew in different directions and they are no longer serving you. So consider yourself graduated from that relationship. Take the quiz that John Gottman has given and find out what you should do. I saw a meme the other day and it said something about divorce and it showed somebody holding on to a rope and the rope is tugging and pulling away from them and if they were to keep holding, they get severe rope burns. But if you let go of the rope that is trying to be pulled out of your hands that you cannot hold on to, you save yourself that burn. It's not quite as simple as that in the process of divorce that will always be painful for everyone that goes through. However, if you can let go sooner, you can start healing sooner and get to the other side. Make yourself better, make yourself more capable, rather than spending years holding on to something that does not want to be held. That is why I say we shouldn't be asking how to avoid divorce. We should be considering whether or not we should be married and being able to find our happiness in that spot. Can you be happy with this person? And don't blame anyone else if you're not. So since I kind of reframed even the question that we were asking at the start on how to avoid divorce and save your marriage, I want you to have some tools beyond this quiz that you can take a look at really quickly. And John Gottman is able to, with more than 90% accuracy in a quick interview with couples, based on facial features that they rep, that, that pop up during his questioning period, identify whether couples will stay together or be divorced. I always kind of avoided this idea. I had learned this early on in my marriage because I was worried that they would find that I should get divorced and I didn't want to confront that. However, I was aware of what he calls the four horsemen, that four horsemen of the apocalypse or the end of your divorce that are really bad signs of a broken relationship if these things are in your marriage. So I want you to take to know this takeaway and use it if you can. You can read up about it on John Gottman's website. It's powerful. But these four things, if they are in your marriage, are highly damaging to your relationship. The first one is contempt. When you are with the person that you love, do you feel that sort of frustration and disdain for responses or actions that they take? Are you rolling your eyes when you're in a social situation and they act or say a certain thing and you think, oh, and your lip curls and you just kind of feel embarrassed by how they act? If that is going on, you have contempt in your relationship. And if that person you're with is doing this to you, they have contempt. And this is a great toll on the relationship that you share something that has to be eliminated in order for you to move on and save your marriage. If that's there, take a look at it. The second one is defensiveness. When you are talking to each other and giving each other feedback, are you able to listen to that person when they're hurt or upset about something that you're doing without getting angry and defensive and defending your position and ignoring them? This can be hard to do when we struggle to see that we are truly loved by the other. And if defensiveness is a constant trigger when you have difficult conversations and you move to anger and frustration and defending your position rather than listening and offering empathy and compassion to what you're hearing regardless of whether or not it's an attack on you, you might want to take a look at that and you might want to consider how you can move beyond. That may be something within yourself, or it may be something that's coming as a rough approach from your partner, not knowing how to approach you in a kind way that doesn't set you off, or it may be a little of both. The third thing is criticism. Are you highly critical? Really, in a marriage, in order for it to be healthy, you have to have a ratio of five kind things to every one negative that is said. If there is not a balance of that nature, even if it's three to one, you are going to feel highly criti criticized by your partner. They will feel criticized by you. This is something to work on. And then stonewalling. Stonewalling is an issue that 
many of us have when we don't want to confront what is in front of us. We shut down, we be silent, and we move ahead. If you have these things in your marriage, I would say get some help <laughs> and then consider what you want to do. The next video coming up is how to heal from a friendship breakup. Might be something that you need to look at now that you've heard all that I've had to say and it may be pending for you, I hope not. But if it is, there's some things you can do. Check the video out. I hope it helps. And I'd love to hear your comments on what you have done to either save your marriage from divorce or move into a divorce as a choice that you have made intentionally to get and find your happiness. Here comes the video, how to heal from a friendship breakup. Come on, let's do this.